Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how I made the second Minecraft Skyblock time lapse. There's a little bit of setup involved here, but it should be pretty easy and if you want to make a video that's similar to the one I made, you can follow what I'm doing here in order to get yourself started. So to start out with, I have two mods installed. I have Optifine and I believe it's called Pixelcam. Pixelcam is basically what replaced Cam Studio after it stopped being developed. So Pixelcam and Optifine, and I'm using Minecraft Forge to run those right now, as you can see down here. And I was running Minecraft version 1.8 because updating to the newer versions really wouldn't gain anything as far as the map is concerned, and it would just make more issues than it solves. So I'm not going to tell you how to install mo mods. You probably already know how to do that, and if you don't, all of these mods are very wide, widely known, so you should be able to find information about them. But I'm mainly focusing on the sort of weird stuff that I did to make this, as well as a little bit of the editing. So start out, just play Minecraft like you would normally. Just launch it and have it go with the pr correct profile selected and the mods that you have. Although, one thing I should mention about the profile is that I made it so that it loads with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 which makes it so that the recording software, whenever it records the game window, automatically has it in the correct resolution for video editing. I recorded it 1920 by 1080 and that's standard 1080p resolution and that's something that you're going to want to make sure is there so that it always starts with the right size. So you're not going to start multiplayer, you're just going to start single player and load up Skyblock and load up whatever map you're playing. So here I am in the map. This is probably where you would have started if you downloaded the map from the main video. But right now, I'm just going to open to LAN mode spectator and I will allow cheats because there are some times where I need to use slash time set day because there is more than one person on the server. And also it's just sort of a nice thing to have if something goes wrong. And now what you're going to want to do here with the Minecraft launcher, you're just going to want to close it. And this will still be running. It's fine. And up next we have to navigate to our Minecraft installation. So the way you do that, if you haven't done this before, type in percent app data percent, hit enter, and well, the app data directory is this, but you'll want to go into roaming, and there's a folder called dot Minecraft. And you're going to want to go in here, it'll probably be in a different order for you, but there's this one program called launcherprofiles.json and you're going to want to open it with some sort of text editor. I have Notepad++, you can use Notepad, anything is fine. And you can see here we have all of our different Minecraft profiles for when we're launching and also down here we have our username. Now actually this should be laserlord10, probably if I hit F5, that's not the right button. Anyway, this would be normally your standard Minecraft username. But what we want to do, first of all, is not highlight everything. Control F to do find, and we will do find and replace. And we will find whatever your username is, in my case it's LaserLord10, and we will replace it with something other than LaserLord10. Because if you have two Minecraft profiles with the same username, it won't let one of, it won't let one of those connect because that causes issues within the server. So you basically need to make the server think that your camera account has a different username than your regular account. You don't need to buy two Minecraft accounts to do this for a local server. If you're going on to a public server though that's not really run on your local network, you likely will need to have multiple accounts or you could just like ask a friend to borrow theirs for a little bit because so long as you don't play on the same server I'm pretty sure you'd be fine. But I don't really play this game too much anymore. But anyway, so we will do replace all, control S, save it, so that Minecraft knows what's happening. And there we go. See now it says welcome camera instead of welcome Laserlord 10. And we can still play. You likely won't be able to get onto any actual servers if you use this method, but you'll be able to definitely get onto a LAN network or something that you set up with your local network, like if you have a server running on your computer. This one, because it's the camera window, we don't want to resize it. We want to keep it 1920 by 1080. And while it's loading, I can load up Fraps. Fraps is what I used to record this. Here we go, so we have this loaded up, and I just have a simple hotkey set up, and normally I would record at anywhere between 3 and 5 frames per second, although if I really want to speed things up, if it's a really long and boring shot, and I need to make it more interesting, I can shoot it as low as 1 frame per second. I actually would have preferred to shoot it a little bit less than that, 
but overall, I mean, you can speed it up a little bit more in your video editing software, but for me, I can only do that up to four times, which is a bit annoying. But you're gonna wanna, you don't really wanna lock the frame rate because you won't see very much whenever it's recording at five frames per second. You'll definitely wanna hide the mouse cursor just in case. And splitting the movie every four gigabytes is only for certain file systems that can't support files more than four gigabytes each. If you're running on a modern computer, that likely won't be a problem unless you're recording to something like an SD card. So I tend to have this unchecked because whenever you have these really long video files, Having them split up kind of just makes editing difficult, so I wouldn't have this checked. It's checked by default, but I unchecked it. But back to Minecraft. So we have here, remember we have our previous world, which is on a LAN network, and we can go into our multiplayer, and we can see, here it is. So we can log in, and it should just work. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, and this was at the end shot. I'm just going to... so that I can fall because I had to go really far away up to make it unrender. So there we go. And you can see that we are in the world. Now if I go back game mode three, that's spectator mode, you can like fly through stuff. It's pretty useful. You're gonna wanna press F1 so that you don't have things. And because Optifine is installed, if you hold down control, you zoom in and that also gets rid of the smooth camera, which can be kind of annoying. Now, in a lot of the shots I did, I didn't have the field of view, the standard kind of wide field of view of normal Minecraft playing, because I think that that can look a little bit bad if you use it all the time for Minecraft videos, and I think that's also part of how my videos can just look. Like, they look good because of that. And, like, normally I play with, like, FOV 93. It doesn't really matter. It's your preference. But you really want to bring this down. Like, 30, I find, is a pretty decent one. And you can see, well, obviously, you couldn't play like this. But if you record like this, and watch this, if I hit Alt-Tab, it doesn't go to the Escape menu. And that's another way I recorded. And because of the way Fraps is, it doesn't record the windows on top of it. It's not entirely, it's not entirely a screen recorder. It just records that window. So I could go over here, get my camera set up, point it at where I want it to, control page up, and now I'm recording and then Alt-Tab here, it's still recording this window, and my mouse, because I don't have mouse capture enabled, isn't being captured either, or this window, or anything else that I put on top of this, so I could be doing anything, and it will not be recorded. And you can see that I am still playing around with my survival account, not really account, survival client, I would say, and you can see that I'm running around here on the little screen down here. You can see, well, I hit Alt-Tab to try to point to it. It didn't work, of course. But that's how I got Minecraft set up. And in order to do the camera motions, I just did the standard pixel cam commands, which are the same as that of Cam Studio. So slash cam, I believe it's cam p1. Oh, cam p1. Slash cam p. There we go. <laughs> so slash cam p adds point one, or you can do control p. And then you also go, like, you go to your second point, control P. I like to keep the movements a little bit more subtle. I've seen some people go absolutely crazy with it, and it just looks terrible. So, you know, subtlety is important. And then I have those two points. You can add way more if you want. And that's also how I got the ending shot there. I didn't manually control anything. And then in order to get it to go, you do slash cam start, and then the amount of time. It says you can do hours, but I find that I can't. I can only go up to 59 minutes and then it loops around. So if I wanted it to be 59 minutes, I would do 59 minutes and then hit enter, although you won't be able to see that. So let's just do five seconds and then I travel between those two points in a nice smooth manner in five seconds. And of course, while I'm doing this, I would have hit the record button, alt tabbed over to my other Minecraft client, or Minecraft instance, I could say, and start doing my stuff with the map. So that's generally how I got the Minecraft set up and how I recorded. And now I'm gonna show you what I did with the files once I had them done. All right, so the program I used to edit the video down into a sped up section, basically convert it from four FPS to 60 FPS, therefore making it faster, was a program called Virtual Dub. Right now you're seeing a time lapse of me working throughout my editing day. I believe it took anywhere between 8 and 12 hours to actually fully edit this thing. Actually, it probably took more like 8, 
yeah, eight hours to edit. But besides the point, what I basically did was I imported it into Virtual Dub. I have a tutorial coming out about how to make time lapses in Virtual Dub. It's a bit of an involved process. Virtual Dub isn't exactly user friendly. What I ended up doing was converting it to 60 FPS from 4 FPS, which makes it faster, and it also compressed it a little bit. So I would do that, and then I would delete the original files after I was done, after I checked the output, of course. Now, the files that Virtual Dub export are not very well suited for my video editor. It makes it really laggy. It works, but my video editor doesn't seem to like it. So I did a secondary conversion process where I put those files into a program called Handbrake. And Handbrake basically just compresses things down into an MP4 container. And my program, my video editor, seems to work really well with MP4 files. That's the whole reason of that secondary conversion. And that also took quite a while. And I did batch operations in all of these so that I didn't have to like individually select each file because I probably had hundreds of clips by the end of this. I tended to convert them at the end of each day and at the end of each recording session so that I didn't have just a massive amount of files to convert. Because raw Fraps recordings are very lowly compressed, like they're barely compressed at all. So the file sizes are huge, and whenever you're recording really long time, long duration things like I was, it really can fill up your hard drive quite quickly. And right now you're probably seeing the time lapse of me editing it, and then there's going to be a time lapse of me exporting it. And the final export took 8 hours because I exported it at 4K 60fps because I thought YouTube would support that, although it turns out if you have 60fps it only goes up to 1080p 60fps, so the 4K version might still be processing, it might already be up, but as of now it's just 1080p, but honestly with the way YouTube is I don't think anyone would even really care that it's not in 4K, I just sort of wish it was. But Nonetheless, that's how I edited this. I hope you enjoyed this little mini time lapse I put in there. And if you have any other specific questions, I mean, it's not too much about video editing, like, oh, how did you do this specific thing? It sort of helps just to, like, know a video editor. I used Sony Movie Studio because I've gotten used to it and it's relatively cheap and pretty capable for what I need to do. If you want to know a little bit more, you can ask me just not anything too specific, like how to use Movie Studio because... There's a lot more there than just do these few settings. You really should learn it. But nonetheless, I hope you learned a little bit from this video, and thanks for watching.